Hi guys, Evie here. After watching this video, you will know everything about Unikina O2 Frost and Sword, our third lifetime suit. O2 Frost and Sword is a cool or blue UR. I translated the name and the designer. Its original Chinese name is Yonijina Shuang Yu Jian Zhi Shi. This suit has 9 clothing items and 5 makeup items. We'll take a look at the original, awakened displays, and all the other essential information, including a detailed pre farming guide. First, let's take a look at the original suit in all 4 skin tones. We have Moonlight Tune, Nikki's Base Skin Tone, Glowing Ardor, and Passion Rhythm from left to right. I don't know why, but pre farming videos are the hardest for me to make and they take the longest. But I know a lot of you have requested this and I feel really bad about procrastinating. So I pushed myself this week and this video is finally out. Okay, let's talk about it. I was so excited to finally get a northern style suit and Nikki looks amazing in cool suits like this. She looks so dignified and gorgeous. I fell in love with it the moment I saw it. However, nothing is versatile in this suit. Well, maybe except for the hairstyle and some accessories. I don't think that's the problem with this suit though, because we don't have a lot of similar things to style items from this suit with. This also makes Unikina's suit super unique. Paper nailed every detail of this armor-inspired outfit, like the fluffy trims, embroidery, and armor pieces. I especially love how detailed her boots are. Paper gave Nikki their version of medieval quests, Pauline and Greaves. I might have pronounced those wrong, sorry, but I learned those from googling medieval armor sets because I was wondering where Paper got their inspiration from. The lace details inside her boots are also amazing. Even though it's inspired by armors, we still want Nikki to be pretty, so the lace balanced out this outfit perfectly. Here are showcases of the unawakened individual items. The lace details inside her boots came from these beautiful stockings. I love it when Paper makes 10 plus items for suits for the arena or lifetime crafting suits because they're free. Sometimes I feel like paper adds unnecessary items to event UR suits just for them to be harder to complete. But praise paper for adding extra items in free UR suits. Also, this is kind of irrelevant, but as a perfectionist myself, I am in love with the toenails I got from CNY 2020 event. I know I made fun of it when I got it in the video I posted a while ago, but Gosh, it makes showcases of individual items so much easier. I hate it when I can't take off Nikki's slippers when showcasing her stockings, but now I can show you what her whole tree actually looks like. Now moving on to makeup items. I'll take everything apart because the entire set seems kind of limiting, so it'd be more helpful to look at each item individually. First, lipstick. Although I love different kinds of makeup and I think a lot of people look great in different colored lipsticks, this blue sheer lip color is not for me. I like bold colors when they're opaque, but I don't know what to do with them when they're sheer like this. Then we have the eyebrows. I like arched eyebrows, but I don't use this as often as the ones from the guild. I think these are a bit too arched for everyday outfits. The foundation item is a lot, I admit. So do most later UR foundations. I still like it though. I don't use it very often, but it's really well made. The little diamond pieces under her eyes are part of the foundation item. The eyelashes are gray. They're just normal eyelashes other than the color gray. I think they're nice and well designed in this context because I tried putting Nikki in darker color lashes with this foundation and it was just too too much. The gray eyelashes are perfect for this set. Last but not least, the contacts. The contacts can be styled with super cute outfits to match the blue in these outfits, such as Spring Leaves by Ye Xiao or the recent Eye Panda suit. I think this might be the most versatile item from the set, even though it's still not that versatile. Let's then awaken it. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of O to Frost and Sword and Sun of Light and Dawn. I adore both versions and I love how different they are. 
the silver and blue suit now evolves into red and gold. I don't have a favorite and I love both equally. I love that silver and blue and red and gold are such common colors in Nikki's closet. That way it makes styling with items from this suit a lot easier. The first thing I notice is how the makeup no longer works that well with the Awakened set. Okay, setting that aside, the Awakened version is equally detailed. I think this set seems more refined than the original. I also love her super long red hair, even though I don't use it very often. Honestly, I like both of these suits a lot, but I don't really style with things from these suits that often. If you're a longtime subscriber, you know how much I love fluffy things, especially fluffy capes. However, this one is kind of different. There are a lot more fluffy coats and they are way more versatile than this. I love staring at this set and appreciating its details, but we have two limited northern style clothes to really play around with items from this suit. I hope we can get more suits that are themed around similar styles and we'll be able to use items from this suit more often. Oh, one more thing. I wish the sword had more poses, to be honest. She only really have this one pose that holds her sword down to the ground. So unless you're super good at Photoshop, otherwise she can't really hold it up. Here are showcases of the Awakened individual items. We can get 9 ray colors, which is the total number of items this set has. I think the necklace, crown, and stockings are easier to work with and can be styled differently, but the rest has a really distinctive style that can't really be overlooked. You should still get this set though, because it's a good, decent UR. The most important part is that everything is free. Let's now move on to reflection, archiving, pre-farming guides, and more. First, let's take a look at the On Awaken cover art on the left and Awaken on the right. You can find high quality versions of these in my Discord server under the wallpaper channel. The link is in my video description. Here's Awakening Rewards Order when you level up O to Frost and Sword and Awaken it to Sound of Light and Dawn. This set has 14 items total and all of the clothing pieces have stronger recolors. Like our other UR suits, the makeup items from this set don't have recolors. Okay, now let's talk about how strong the reflection is. This is a strong reflection when you max out its passives and it's good for memory stairway. Let's take a look at the comparisons to help you better decide which reflection you should use. I'll talk about all the reflections shown here from the best to the worst. I also want to mention that sadly, Krista is no longer the best blue reflection. The CNY 2022 Tiger suit is now the strongest one. But I've been really busy with moving and yeah, I'm about to move again. So I haven't updated my database yet. However, we won't get the tiger one in a while. So it's still worth talking about Krista and the rest of the reflections as of now. The orange line, as usual, is Krista. She's really strong and you can easily tell from this graph. Then Luming Cloud Benediction. It's the regular decent type of reflections like Lilith and Loan from Seal Fantasy. These are great to use in the game now. We can see that under Luming Cloud Benediction, the green line Leonid's Dustless Feathers is overlapping with Unikina Old to Frost and Sword. They're basically the same as they share the same color reflection skill. The slight differences can be from the different passives each of them has. However, the differences are very subtle and if you've already leveled up the passives for one of them, it's not worth the hassle to change to the other one. As you can see, when you leveled up Unikina and Leonid's passives to 5, they're as strong as their normal decent arena reflections, in this case, Lumin Cloud Benediction. Thus, investing in a 10 second buffer reflection is a great choice, since lifetime suits are generally free if you don't ever purchase additional attempts. They're basically a 2-in-1 as they can be strong but a bit unstable in the arena but very strong in the memory stairway. However, do consider that lifetime suits echoes take forever to farm, so it might be easier to pull in pavilions if you're really lucky. After these rather confusing ones, we have the weakest UR, the Red Cross, Lilith's Feather Fallen Abyss. 
I translated this, by the way. I know it's bad. I'm not very good at translating these names. You can get this reflection from the arena. All the arena reflections are 20 second buffers. They're not bad and are not the equivalent of shield and debuff removing reflections in SSRs, but they're the weakest compared to other URs because we don't have debuff removing and shield URs so far. However, they're still a decent choice if you don't want to invest in styling power and are just here for the clothes. After that, we have SSRs. I didn't put all SSRs here, but just the three notable ones. Low and Flying Free is an example of those decent reflections for the arena, but within SSRs. It's similar to a lot of Palladium reflections such as Nikki Before the Dawn, Go Go Duck, Speedy Bunny, and others. The weakest one shown in this graph is Zoe Mercenary Queen. It's the worst here, but doesn't mean it's bad. 20 second buffers are worse than this, and shield reflections are the worst. Zoe Mercenary Queen is decent in the arena and great in the memory stairway. If you're happy with your arena ranking, there's no reason to use other reflections if you're still using Zoe. This section is basically only for competitive players. Just remember that this is a dress up game. Don't feel pressure to care about rankings because you can eventually get all the arena URs. So play at your own pace. Here's the pre-farming guide I made. Apologies for the bad translations. Everything is translated by me again and formatting insanely long names are annoying. I tried really hard to shorten the names so some might not make much sense. I could have translated everything better, but at least there are pictures, right? Okay, sorry. I also translated the time corridor stage names. I'll show you what each stage is, their attributes and rewards later in this video so it's less confusing. You can find a high quality picture version of this in my Discord server under the farming channel. The link to my server is listed in the description below. Here's a lazier version, aka a version I like to pre-farm with. Well, I love seeing complete pre-farming guides, but it takes a while to find the items I can pre-farm for, which are usually just main story items. So I made this shortened version as well. I have also uploaded this on my Discord server. You can also take a screenshot here since this is a lot shorter than the complete pre-farming guide. Now moving on to the item raw scores. The hairstyle is good scoring. One of the reasons is that this is a relatively newer set. Thus, newer sets have higher scores, usually. However, I would still say that this is a great value lifetime crafting suit. The headwear is just as strong as Lumin's headwear. The handheld is also great. I know that some of you have asked and considered not to complete certain lifetime suits, but I still recommend completing them when you can. It does take a while, but they're totally worth it. The necklace is okay, but we have much better ones in the game. Plus, only 5 accessories will be counted towards your final battle rating. The dress isn't that great, especially since we'll have a memory stairway version of the angel dress, Luming's dress, and your event URs. The coat is great, but we have to consider that a lot of fancier coats can't be styled with complex dresses, but I mean, most of us are getting this suit anyways, so... I don't know why I talked about that. Okay, hosiery is great. We'll have blue UR hosieries in the future, but I feel like we'd use this for a little bit. Or if paper has really gone insane and released newer URs first. Hmm, I really don't know. The stockings are pretty though. The shoes are great, but I think we'll get higher scoring ones in the future. Depends on when paper is going to release this and if they're going to release UR events in their original order. Gloves are great, but everything is just so hard to predict. So I feel like this raw score section isn't very helpful. This is a time corridor pose you can get when you sweep the stages and gained enough points for it. I will show you a list of required points later in this video. It's a selfie pose, which means you can zoom in and out, but I really like it. This is a suit completion pose, not the animated one that I kept talking about. This can be claimed in the achievement section when you finish crafting O to Frost and Sword. It's a turnable still pose in the photo studio. You can also take off her handheld or switch between the awakened and unawakened versions. This suit doesn't have an animated suit completion pose because it was released before this feature came out on CN. I hope we'll get it on global though, since we just got this feature in the latest update. 
and it's possible because we have the animated suit completion pose for the next lifetime suit. So maybe they'll add it in the future, who knows? It's paper. No one knows. This is a background and template you can get through sweeping stages a certain amount of times in time corridor. The background can also be used on the home screen and front list. Let's now check out what the time corridor page looks like. It's really similar to the star C1 we have on global. So let's go to start journey, then time corridor. It shows us the latest suit on the front page, but you will be able to switch between these lifetime suits using this button here. We currently have three lifetime suits in time corridor on CN. You can farm all of them simultaneously because the daily attempts are not shared. Let's select Unikina suit. Starting from top to bottom, the magnifying glass icon lets you preview the suit. Once you're in this page, you can take a look at the original and the recolored here. This blue button says share. You can get 50 pink gems when you share this page for the first time. After that, it's just a regular share button where you can get the daily sharing rewards. The play button shows you the cinematic, which I'll link in the description. Moving on to the bottom. The blue button on the left takes you to the story stages. Let's click on it. Okay, so it has been a while, so the order I'm about to mention might not be 100% correct, but I tried my best. I think we started with this diamond-shaped button here. Loan welcomes us to the Snowhawk Revolutionary Army exhibition and starts the story here. After you've completed this, the farming page at the bottom right corner should become available. We'll check it out later. It will also opens up the next chapter, which can be directly translated as Snowfield Memories. There are 11 story stages that talks more about the lore. Then after reading everything, you will unlock the top button, the epilogue. It's another sort of story stage. After you've completed the epilogue, the game will give you a piece from Old to Frost and Sword for free. In this case, we'll get the handheld sword here. Now the farming stages. Click here. On the top left corner, we have the ranking. The number one player on my server completed the suit in 13 days. Let's check out the rewards I talked about earlier. You can get the background as 300 points equals to 15 sweeps of stages in this section. Then the three stickers at 800 points, 40 sweeps. The selfie pose at 1500 points, which is 75 sweeps. The beautiful avatar frame at 5000 points, 250 sweeps. Lastly, the text bubble at 8,000 points, which is 400 sweeps. We have six stages here, and they require all five of our attributes. They each drop different materials, and the materials are listed on the left side of the screen. Take a screenshot if you want to use this as a reference alongside my pre-farming guide. The three dots indicate the attributes. For example, Exhibition and Trust, the first stage is blue. You won't get any additional rewards when clearing this stage because this is kind of like the start of the actual stages. Then Military Canteen, you can get a variety of rewards upon reaching different battle ratings, such as keys, gold, gems, and most importantly, concept shards. I'll show you all the ratings required here on CN, but keep in mind that they may be different for global, even though the star C ones stay the same. Here's red tassel ball, the yellow stage, all the rewards here. Flare, the purple stage, rewards. Memorial painting, another blue stage, view all rewards. Lastly, all named poems, the pink stage, all rewards. I wonder if I get some of the translations right? We'll see. I hope I can get at least one right. That'd be kind of funny. This suit is indexed in Rift of North. We finally have something in this index. You can get 500 pink gems upon completion of this suit. It is archived in Heart of Steel. We currently have four URs in this archive five SSRs and three SRs on CN. The URs are our fourth lifetime suit by Kiki. 
Hestia Pass and Beyond, the V-Level suit. Zoe's Traveler's Robe, our current Arena Season 3 suit. And this suit. This is an okay archive. Some archives have around 6 URs, so 4 isn't bad. Alright, that is it for this video. I hope my video was helpful. Do you like this suit? i love to know your thoughts. Let's chat in the comments. Please share, like, or subscribe if you like this video as it'll help me tremendously. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye!